Hey everybody, it's Stephanie Leah Warrington Jackson, and this is a five minute Bible study. Today's topic is about letting go. Now, we have all heard the phrase, let go and let God. But it's important to know how to practically apply that to our everyday lives. One thing that I have noticed is that a lot of people use this phrase when they feel overwhelmed, burdened, and have no control over their lives. They use this phrase usually to let go of materials, things, and people. Although this may be necessary to do, I want to challenge people to view this phrase not about letting go of things, people, and other materials, but letting go of yourself, your ways, your desires, and your habits. The Bible says in Proverbs 16 verse 25, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Which means, a lot of times, when we take things into our own hands and try to make life go according to our way and desires, it ultimately leads us to a life and path of destruction. In the moment, we don't realize it, but a large portion of our issues in life actually stems from wanting to have control over everything that happens in our life. Of course, there are outside factors that can contribute to the burdens in our lives, and that does require us to remove ourselves from those things. But when we find ourselves trying to overachieve, do too much, be perfectionist, and create a life with no error, it becomes burdensome because we naturally are experiencing life in an imperfect, fallen world. I myself had to learn the hard way about not letting go and letting God. There were times I experienced heartache, anxiety, frustration, jealousy, and fits of rage because I didn't want to let go of my own sinful ways and desires. Once I gave my life to Jesus, I started realizing how important it was for me to let go of myself so God can start moving in my life. Once you accept Jesus as your savior, you are proclaiming that you are no longer a slave to yourself and the ways of this fallen world, but You are now building a relationship with your God, your creator, to live in his will, which it states in Galatians 2, verse 20. In order to live a life of righteousness according to God's will, we have to deny ourselves and pick up our cross daily. Luke 9, chapter 23. But in reality, what does that look like? How do we as imperfect people learn to let go of ourselves to live accordingly to a perfect God's will. I would say the first thing that we would have to do is acknowledge that we are imperfect and we fall short and we cannot fix ourselves in a broken world by ourselves. We need a savior and we need Jesus. Secondly, we need to acknowledge that it's okay to have plans and desires, but it's ultimately God's decision for your life. We can't idolize our plans and desires. It's his timing, not ours. His will, not ours. Which it states in Proverbs 16, verse 9. Another thing that we have to do is before making decisions, learn to be still and know that he is God. Psalm 46, verse 10. He will take care of you and also acknowledge him in everything that you do so that he can lead you to a fulfilling life. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. Lastly, know that when going through trials and tribulations, remember these things are only for a season. Usually God is trying to teach you something, grow you, or show you something. When you put your trust in him and not yourself, all things eventually will come out together for your good, if we trust in the Lord. Romans 8, verse 28. With all this being said, it's important to know that a lot of times our own issues stem from our own pride and ego of not wanting to let go of ourselves. It's easy to let go of others and things, but the real reward is having the ability to let go of yourself and let God take control over your life. We actually limit ourselves from God's grace, mercy, and blessings and plan for ourselves when we have no desire to let go. But his love is so strong for us that he gives us all the opportunities to seek and find him.